All right, we got this Raw show from Monday night, building up SummerSlam. And it opened up with uh, Dom, Finn, and Rhea, everybody in the ring, playing uh, well, paying homage. A, well, yeah. Dom, they, Dom, Dom wasn't in it first. They but called him out. But uh, he came out to celebrate beating Wes Lee. They showed video of it. They had a video of his short career, as it is. And uh, Kevin and Sammy interrupted. And Kevin was upset that we've done this before. We beat them. People don't want to listen to Dominic talk. How about you never speak again? Dom said, listen, I'm champion now. And Sammy said, you know what? It's true. These fans do disrespect you. But the reason they disrespect you is because nobody here actually respects you. And he says, I have well, an idea well, how you can I get mean, respect. Doesn't that sort of make sense? Yes. He says, how about you face me tonight? And Dom says, if you want some, come get some. And then Sammy said, well, you know, last week we were going to wrestle you guys in a non-title match, and, and you talked us into putting the titles on the line. So seems to me that if you're a fighting champion, you'll put that North American title on the line. So, of course, Dominic doesn't want to do this, but uh, Rhea grabs the mic, and she says, Dom accepts. And he was not happy about that, um, but uh, that was announced for later on in the show. And, man, this Dom... He got he so, so much, heat. much heat. Like, they I did mean, these long shots where you could just see the people in the crowd. I mean, man, they're on their feet, and they're they're so... They hate this guy. Well, and, they love uh, to hate him. Well, they love to hate him, yes. Yeah, it's not like it's not like they're going to throw, like... Uh, oh, there's people know, that hate him. Or, Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah but, but most of them, most of them aren't, aren't like, going to hop the rails and, and all that. No. I mean, but, but they... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something to watch. I mean, I watch him... And and I just think that like, you know, when when they turn him babyface, which you know at, at some point they will, like they actually got somebody in him. Like you know, like they're looking for that Hispanic superstar so bad for so long, and like when he was a babyface, it was kind of like, you know, the whole thing where everybody was like, uh, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that Ray was his father, he wouldn't even have gotten a contract to, for developmental in the first place. And whatever it is, and I mean, a lot of it's working with good guys, and I'm not saying he's great in the ring, but he's certainly fine. And he was, I'll tell you what, with um, Sami Zayn, and of course, Sami Zayn's one of the better guys there is out there. They had a good I, match. I thought they had a really good match. And I thought, but I thought Dominic looked really good in that match. I mean, I was just like, okay, he, you know, in this match, boy, I mean, I think they had the best match on the show. And, and it wasn't Sami Zayn. You know, just carrying the whole match. I thought Dom Dom is good, and God damn, does he get heat? I mean, he's like, he's got presence now. I mean, he's a real freaking superstar. That judge, that whole Judgment Day act, and I mean, they know it because dude, they're the hottest act on Raw. Man, well, yeah, for sure. By I mean, that, far on Raw, and Rhea I mean, is the just, hottest woman in the company right now. By far, Rhea yes. is the hottest woman in wrestling. She is, she is the, you know, like. Since the peak of Becky Lynch, um, there has been nobody over, like all those people who they've tried to put over, whether it's, you know, Charlotte Flair or whatever. I mean, they got something in, in Rhea this now. I mean, she is just, she is just like, yeah. And she's like, isn't it, she's like 26 years old? Man, she is, she's going to be, um, you know, I, I think long term, you know, she's going to be the biggest woman star for a long, long, you know, probably, you know, 10 years. Um, so they got, they got, they just got, they got something in this, in this group. I mean, I know that they'll eventually, like they even still did the tease with Priest and, and Finn again. And, um, Seth Rollins was talking about it. You know, it's going to happen at some point, but right now, like I wouldn't be so quick to, to pull the trigger on that because that act is so hot right now. So we had uh, the Becky Zoe Stark match, which uh, went on first, even though they had quite the stipulation, which was that if Becky lost, she had to get "Thank You Trish" tattooed on her chest. Of course, nobody believed there was any chance whatsoever of that happening. Yeah, and uh, they had a good match, and it was a good match. Yeah. Traded cradles. Becky put her in the disarmor, and then Trish throws the mask into the ring for a distraction. Becky lets go of the hold. She gets cradled. Near fall. Zoe tries to springboard. Becky catches her in midair. Manhandle slam pins her. So no tattoo for Becky, and she gets her match against Trish Stratus. Big pop for the finish when Becky got the win. You know, one thing with the show tonight was um, I thought they did, like, like the whole show was essentially, you know, build for a SummerSlam. And when the show was over, it was like, 
I thought they did a hell of a job as far as building SummerSlam. I mean, this, you know, between that and the Roman Reigns thing, which they replayed on the show, when it was over, it's kind of like, man, this is a, this is a big show coming up. They've really, you know, dialed in on this one better than. I mean, they've had, um, you know, they've had big pay per views all year, you know, and good ones, um, and some great, you know, main events like you know the uh, Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns and everything where they were really big, but. This one for like top to bottom of the card, it's they've done a great job, and it's like the other thing is is like, and it's kind of wor. I don't want to say worries me about AEW because there's there's time left and everything like that, but usually like AEW's got these these pay per views coming up, and usually at this point they may have no matches announced for the pay per view five weeks out, but usually we'll sit here and we'll know the top three or four matches. They're obvious. Um, and I can sit here and go, well, like, you know, I looks like they'll probably do MJF and Adam Cole on one of those two shows. But it's like, I don't know. Um, I think there was one other one that, that uh, um, but it's like, there really isn't anything that where you can go like, okay, you know, it's going to be, you know, John Moxley against whoever. I mean, I think it's going to be Kenny Omega and Takeshi on one of them. So that's the other one that, or maybe uh, Takeshi and Jericho against Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi. You know, maybe they'll do that because Kota Bushi um, believes he's going to the Wembley show and that would fit. Um, but, um, or maybe it is Omega and, and Kota, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's going to be Omega and Takeshi in some form. It's time for that. They've done enough angles for it. But they don't have, like, it's like, they don't have, like, all that stuff. So I'm kind of like, what, what, what cards are we going to have? I'm just kind of curious as, as to what the cards are going to end up being for Chicago and for London. Well, we had uh, Cody coming out, and he was holding his arm gingerly, but he was not wearing a cast this week. And he cut a promo about how he was not surprised what Brock did last week. And, uh, in fact, he was impressed. But someone who was not impressed was his mother. His mother had seen Terry his, Funk throw fireballs at his father. She would drink with Gordon Soley. His mother drank with Gordon Soley at the Columbia Club in Ybor City. Yeah. yeah. They got a big pop, too, the Gordon Soley reference. He said, I don't want to go to SummerSlam to win a rubber match. I want to embarrass you. And he says, people think I'm poking the bear. I'm not poking the bear. I'm slapping the bear, and I'm telling them to come and get it. And he vowed, at SummerSlam, Brock, I'm going to end this. No stip yet. But one more week. Yeah. It's interesting because that's kind of what he said last week, and that one that, that didn't go so well. No. But, but you know, it was to set this up, so, you know, all that. But I thought he did a good promo. Uh, good job there. And then we had old Sammy and uh, Dirty Dom for the North American title. And the uh, match was really good. But yeah. the, my one issue with this show was we had two matches in a row with the same shitty finish. And That's the WWE finish. I know, but you know what? I don't need to see two in a row. I agree with I mean, you, by the way. I, I totally agree with you. I'm just saying, like, like that is their mentality of a television finish. Well, yeah, you but, know, but my it's point always is... always distraction. Like, always. you can do distraction, but, like, the distraction was so shitty. It wasn't just that it was a distraction finish. It was like, he hits the exploder in the corner. He's going to go for the kick. Oh, Rhea and Priest are beating up Kevin. He's rolled up from behind and pinned. I'm like, yeah. could you have a lamer distraction finish? A finish that's already well, lame, well, it's, but it's, you it's, made it double lame. Well, I mean, the idea was it was significant because they did a, a real injury angle on Kevin. It was actually... It, it's that's actually, all was, fine and dandy, but you could do that with a better finish. Oh, you mean the just the pulling the trunks? Yeah. yeah just, but, oh, man, he's distracted and rolled up. whoop de doo Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not even creative. That's my issue. Like you can distract somebody for a finish. WWE wrestling matches are not creative. Every you know that's that's the thing that people. It's like WWE is about doing the same thing over and over and over again, so people go to expect it, and then sometimes like you know you'll throw them off a little bit, but like in um, Japan or in AEW, it's all about you know making people think this is going to happen and then not happen. You know like like surprise them in matches wwe is about training people to pop you know and all of wrestling is training people to pop for spots but with wwe that's what it is is that that's what you go for is those programmed things so you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again that's because 
I think that their feeling is is that when you do that basic stuff that they know how to do, that that will appeal to a wider number of people rather than the people who want to, you know, think about it in depth and all that like that. Those people you have to, you, you know, you have to think another step. With WWE fans, you don't really have to think that other step. You just do the basics. Um, so that's what they're doing. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.